In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Modern Art 4 Photoshop action. So here is uh, my stock photo that I'm going to use. I'm going to play the action and it's going to create these effects for us. So I'll just click through uh, a few more examples that I have. So the effect is really customizable. I keep everything layered so you can um, tweak the look how you want. I've also included 10 color options which I'll show you um, how to use and how to combine multi how to combine multiple color options together. And the last example is that to that. Okay, I'll close these down and start from scratch. Okay, so um, if you're familiar with my actions, uh, you will be familiar with the setup and just things to make sure of before running the action, but I'll go through it again um, for those of you who don't know. So firstly, if you look into your layer panel, uh, your photo layer must look identical to this. Uh, must have that background text with the lock symbol. Um, so if it doesn't, you'll need to do this step. So I'll just set it up um, for those who uh, whose photo layer doesn't look like that. So I'll just delete that. So say you open up your photo and it's called something something random. Um, just go to layer, new background from layer, and it will set it as a background. So you only need to do that step if you open up your photo and it doesn't look identical to this. Okay, so still in the layer panel, head on up to the top right hand corner icon here and go to panel options. Right down the bottom, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked. Next, go to image mode, just ensure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. And um, always with photo effect actions, it's best to work with high resolution photos. Um, my example here is 2000 by 3000. Uh, pixels so that's a really good range to work with um, I would avoid using photos say under a thousand pixels uh, high resolution photos tend to create um, just more detailed effects and much more crisp and you just get better results so just keep that in mind all right so uh, what I need to do now is create a new layer so go to layer new layer and this must be called brush all in lowercase Select OK. Now, with this brush layer selected, uh, you need to highlight the area of your photo where you want to apply all the effects to. So I want to uh, trace around or select this character here. Um, I don't want any of the background. So uh, what I might be able to do, because my subject is so contrasted against the background, I could probably just use my magic wand tool and um, start oops, select the background layer and I can start selecting the areas around my subject, just like that. Okay, now what I need to do, oh, I'll just grab that area there, and there. What I need to do now is invert that selection, uh, because if I now select the brush layer, if I now fill that selection, it's gonna fill just the background, so I need to uh, invert it. So if I hold down Control shift i or Command-Shift-I on a Mac, inverts that selection. Now, if I want to fill that selection, uh, say with my foreground color here, black, it can be any color, by the way, uh, doesn't matter. Just hold down Alt, or option on a Mac, and hit Delete, and it will fill it with that foreground color. So I hit Deselect, Control D. So now I've got my brush layer there, I've um, highlighted my subject, and what I might do, I might just soften up the base of my photo here. I might just hit E to get my eraser tool out, and I might just brush away. Don't want that stuff down there. So um, the, most of the effect will clip here. Uh, okay. So, and if you want to experiment with other brushing, uh, other brushing methods, sorry, just create. Um, I'll just do this again. So I'll create a new layer called brush, and you can just hit B on the keyboard, grab your brush out, and you know you could experiment with you know just brushing over random areas like this. You know, different size brushes. Um, you know, you could get some really cool results brushing that way as well. Okay, so back to here. I've got my brush layer done. 
Um, what I need to do now is light up the actions panel. So go to window actions. It'll pop up here. Um, head on up to the top right hand corner icon and go to load actions. Select the modern art 4 to ATN. It pops up here. And that's all you need to do to set up your uh, Photoshop file. So this, this action will play for about three minutes. Uh, that depends on the size of your photo. If you're working with photos, say over 4,000 or 5,000 pixels, <coughs> excuse me, um, it might take about you know five minutes to play back. It also depends on um, the speed of your computer as well. So I'm just gonna click play, gonna get to the result, and um, I'll talk to you about what each, what each layer does and how it affects the design, how you can make some um, customizations. So I'll skip the video ahead to the result. Alright, so the action stopped and uh, this is the result. So now I'm just going to uh, get rid of this actions panel. So just close that and look into the layer panel now. So uh, with each action, the very first thing you want to do is uh, once the action's finished, you want to collapse all these folders uh, just so that our workflow is uh, really neat. So with the folder that's selected Modern Art 4, just hold down Control Alt or Command Option on a Mac, click on that arrow, and that has just collapsed all the folders. So everything is much neater. All right, so what I've done, I've left the brush layer up the top here. So you can see that there. So you can see um, clearly from where we brush that all the effects are concentrated around that area and they sort of just taper off towards the edges of the, um, the canvas. Now every time you run the action, you're gonna get a completely different result. So all these textures that are generated by the action, they're gonna look completely different every time. They're gonna be randomized. So if you just want to try uh, run the action a few times to get a, um, to get a range of results and sort of pick which one you like from there, just delete these two folders and play the action again. Alright, so the adjustments folder here just has a bunch of color options and some um, a few adjustment layers. I'll come back to those. That's This folder here is just to tweak the overall design. Um, yeah, I'll come back to that. So jump inside the Modern Art 4 folder. So if I turn that one on and off, that houses all the effects. Okay, so we'll go from the top here. Now, What's very important with this action, particularly with people as your subjects and faces, is you generally want the face to be the point of interest and you want that to be reasonably clear. It doesn't really matter if everything else is, you know, uh, has a lot of effects applied to it, it isn't that clear, but you want the face to be much clearer than the, the rest of the design. So what I've done is I've set this layer up here called Reveal Original Photo, and I've just got in brackets mask. I'm just trying to tell you there to use the mask. So if I flick that layer on and off, it does nothing. Uh, basically because this mask is black, it's hiding that layer. So if I just select that mask and hit Control i to invert it, to flip it to white, it reveals the original photo, just like that, see? So the way, the way you use this layer is you select the mask and you grab a white brush. So if I hit B on the keyboard, uh, use the square brackets to adjust the size of the brush, just like that there and um, I want a white brush. Now a quick way to um, flip the, so currently my active brush is black. It'll use the foreground color. If I hit X on the keyboard, it flips it. So white is now my foreground color. So if I now brush onto this mask, it will reveal the original photo. So all I've done there, I've used a soft brush. I'll just undo that. Um, using a soft brush and I just one big brush over the face like that and it's cleared that area right up but what I like to do is soften um, that the area that I brushed even more so that it blends with um, some of the effects below so uh, for example if I double click on this mask and I grab this feather handle and if I bring this all the way up to the top here and sort of swivel it around the top, you can see it starts to blend uh, with the underlying layers, see that? So it's feathering out uh, the area that we brush. It's kind of like blurring it right out. So that way you can sort of adjust how much you want to blend um, with the layers below. 
So I generally like to, you know, put this up pretty high so it keeps some of the effects showing through. Um, you just want to make the face prominent enough um, so that it's nice and clear and stands out from uh, everywhere else. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, another way to actually do this, if I bring this feathering down to zero, okay, if I hit, um, select the mask and hit uh, Control, Alt, or Command, Shift, L, bring up the levels, um, I'll just reset this. Now, you can see in the mask there that little white dot, so that's where we brushed. Now, if you want to fade that out, you can grab this bottom right hand corner handle, and we're going to um, crush uh, the white. So we're going to Grab that, we're going to bring it into the left, and all that's doing is filling the whites in more with black. So if you look at the mask uh, over here when I'm dragging this handle around, see that? See it's going from bright white and you're fading it right out. So that way um, you can adjust the opacity essentially of that area that you brushed. Alright, so that's an important layer. You want to do that particularly. Uh, with people as your subjects, faces, or just anywhere in the design where you want it to be a real focal point. Next folder below is dots, so you can see scattered around the design, <coughs> excuse me, um, are these little dots. Now inside this folder, um, there's just two layers, you can turn them off, that'll hide all the dots, you turn them one by one, um, you can hit Control J to duplicate them, you could probably, um, you could zoom out and hit Control T or Command T to scale that copy up so you can scale it right up so you can have bigger so you can see what I've done there turn that one on and off okay um, now you can see on the folder here there's a big red X through the mask so that big red X um, essentially disables the mask so if I hold down shift and click on this mask it disables it temporarily and if I just click on the mask again it enables it so it's a great way to quickly preview the layout without the mask and with the mask but what I've done here is um, if you don't want those dots to intersect with the area that we brushed so you can see our face and you know, our body there um, just click on that mask and all the dots within the area that we brushed disappear so they only appear on the outside so um, that's just a quick way to remove all the dots if you don't want them but I think it looks pretty cool on this one I'm going to leave it on okay texture set one uh, what I might do here is I'll turn off these three folders um, and these two and explain what's going on with three these three folders here so texture set one if I turn that one on um, that's just uh, a lot of the textures that are generated uh, outside of the area that we brush so generally the way this works is that it grabs the colors from your photo and it extends those colors beyond the boundary of where we brushed and you know I've uh, done it so that it creates a texture um, almost like a watercolor texture and so that's how that folder works um, this one down the bottom texture set 2 I've got in brackets over photo. These are the textures that will appear primarily over your photo. So if I turn that one off, so if I turn that on and on, on and off, you can see that there. So these two just work hand in hand to build up um, most of the effect. And then this one in the middle, you've got sketch lines. So uh, that's, yeah, if you go inside there, there's a bunch of um, layers there you can play around with. Some are turned off by default. Um, but even if you just want a sketch look on its own, you can just use this folder here. Um, you could just use one of these texture sets, you don't have to use them all. So you could use sketch lines with that. Um, you could use sketch lines with the top one like that. But you can see how texture set 2 fills in that main area there. Okay, so I'll, let's go inside texture set 1 and have a look. So there's 9 different layers, um, I've just uh, labeled them like this. TS1 underscore 1 and 2 and 3. So TS1 is just uh, short for a texture set 1. Now, um, you don't have to use them all. You can turn them all off and go up the line, turn them on one by one. So if it's um, if your default result of the action finish is too intense, too many textures, you can go inside this folder and just turn off a bunch of them. Um, you can duplicate them and scale them if you want more, rotate them. Uh, what I also like to do 
is or what you want to do is as you're clicking around through the layers, just quickly um, look up the look up at the opacity of the layer. So you know, if I, as I click down here, that was a 70, 100, 45, 100, 30. So a lot of them um, are quite low, and you can just preview it by just uh, moving your mouse over that word opacity, click and hold and drag to the right to increase it. So that's at 100%, 0%. Um, so yeah, tweak around with the appearance of these layers. Okay, Antoine Nuss. So yeah, and what you can also do is you can preview these layers without the mask just by using that trick of holding down shift and clicking on the mask. So as you go down here, just hold down shift, click, shift. So that looks pretty cool like that. So um, as I turn it on and off, you can see the before and after. So if I look at this mask here, if I go inside this mask, if I hold down Alt or Option on the Mac and click on that mask, I can go inside. So you can see that I've restricted this mask so it, the effect only appears on the outside of the area that we brush. So all the areas in white is where it's going to appear. Black, it's not going to appear. So by holding down Shift, I can temporarily hide it and I can see that that texture now intercepts with the area that we brushed. Um, so what I might do, uh, I like what it's doing here, this white texture cutting in here, but not so much over a face. So I want to clear that up. So what I can do is I'll um, select that mask. Um, I want to fill it all white. So my active foreground color is white. So if I hold down Alt or Option on the Mac and hit Delete to fill it white. Now what I can do, I can select the mask, I can grab a black brush. Um, I want to flip black to the foreground color, hit X. B on the keyboard, and if I just brush into there, I can get rid of that. So now I've kept, you know, this cool effect here, um, all up here as well. So, you know, I just discovered that then just by quickly going down the line and holding shift on these masks, okay? That looks pretty cool. You know, I might keep that without it. So just, yeah, go inside these folders and play around because, um, yeah, you can really adjust uh, your design really fast and discover um, things that look much cooler than the original um, result that the action produced. Okay, so talked about sketch lines. Now, what I like to do every time the action's finished uh, is turn off this folder to preview the design without any sketch lines. And generally, um, I like to brush on where I want those sketch lines to appear. So you can you can see that. So um, you know, it looks really cool around here with no lines. Maybe I want a few lines here. So what I'll do is I'll select the mask of this folder. I'll invert to flip it to black. So I sense it's just hidden all the lines. So what I can do now, if I grab a white brush, I can just brush on where I want those lines to appear. So maybe there, a bit on the helmet, on the chest, uh, down here. Maybe not on the lips. I'll get rid of that. Um, I might turn that reveal original photo back on. Let's get the dots happening. Okay. Might just hide the dots from there for a sec. Okay, so you know what I mean? So you can just, um, when the action's finished, turn this off, preview the design without any lines, and then brush on where you want them to appear. So they don't have to appear everywhere. Um, you can also experiment with you know, changing the order of these folders. So I could drag the sketch lines to the top so that those sketch lines um, now sit on top of everything. Now, the default opacity of the sketch lines folder um, is set to 50%. So keep that in mind. If I turn it up to 100%, it's much more prominent. See that there? So I just found that 50% um, generally suits uh, or blends well with the textures, uh, so but you can play around uh, with the opacity of that folder. Okay, texture set two. Uh, there's just a few layers in here. Again, um, go down the line, look at the opacity of the layers, um, hide, temporarily hide the masks. Okay, so this one's uh, one you want to play around with as well. TS2 underscore one. What you want to do is grab the mask of this layer and move that mask around. So watch what happens when I move that mask around. Basically, the areas, if I go inside this mask, 
hold down Alt or Option on the Mac and click on it. Those areas in white are going to reveal uh, much more of the original looking photo. So if I move that around, if you look over her face, you can see as I move that around, see there her eyes are really clear and I'll move that away. And it's more of that artistic look. Um, but you can sort of focus this area around um, your points of interest as well, which is another way um, to reveal more of the original looking photo. Okay, off. This one here, original photo backing. Um, this one will just sort of, uh, it generally fills in the edges of your, the area that you brush more of the original photo. Um, that effect's gonna appear much more prominent with different photos, but you can just see that work in there. Just turn it on and off, see if you want it, um, you might not. Soft background texture. So I'll just turn off the dots, for, uh, the, the dots, turn that off. So, or what I'll do, I'll turn it up to 100%. So the opacity of this layer is only 30%. So it is essentially this texture here um, with a very low opacity. I'll just turn it up a bit. It was at 13%, I've just turned it up to 20%. It sits in the background there and just sort of helps um, blend all the textures together. Okay, so that's that layer there. Background color, pretty self-explanatory. If you double click on this, um, you can change the background color. Just like that. I'll keep this one more white. And there's our base photo layer. Now, if you want to export your design um, on a transparent background, so uh, all you need to do is turn off these, hide these three bottom layers. So if I hide these three, so you can see there um, that we have a transparent background. So now you can save this out um, as a PNG, a transparent image. You can drop that onto your other designs add text, do more brushing on top of the, of the design. Um, so yeah, that's that. Okay, so I think this is looking pretty good. Now, um, if I go up into the adjustments folder, and talk about what's in here. This top layer here, um, if I double click on it, overall saturation, this is very important. So by default, I've turned up the saturation of the entire design quite a lot. So if I turn that down, that's actually more of the original colors of the photo. Um, but I found that with a higher saturation, it just creates a, um, a cooler effect. So just keep that in mind. If you like play the action and you think it looks too saturated, go into the overall saturation and bring this middle handle down. Play around with this middle handle. Um, I'll just leave it there. This layer here, uh, contrast and I've got in brackets adjust opacity so the opacity of this layer by default at zero if you um, move your mouse over the word opacity click and drag to the right to increase that opacity you can see you can increase the overall contrast of your design so this might just need a fraction 20% this layer here is uh, one you definitely want to play around with if I turn it on you can see that it overlays um, a colored gradient throughout a design, which is, which I think looks really cool. So, uh, and there's a few ways you can play around with this layer. Firstly, the way this layer works is if you double click on this box, there's a lot of options here. Firstly, you can change the angle of the gradient. So, um, I actually think it looks pretty good at that angle. Uh, you can change the scale like that. You make it really um, tight like that. Uh, what else can you do? You can change the, you can change the radial, angle, reflected, um, you can turn this one on reverse to reverse the colors. Um, but I think linear was looking good. Now if you want to change the colors, all you do is click on this, on this box here, gradient, and you've got these two handles here. If you double click on these colored boxes, you can change the color of that particular um, yeah, that color. So you can play around with all this. I uh, still think that orange looks pretty good. So I'll cancel that. Uh, you can add more colors. So if I just click anywhere along this gradient, it'll add another color spot, uh, color stop, sorry. 
and you can again, again double click on that, add more colors. But I'll cancel that because um, I think this is looking pretty good. Well, actually, I might change that back to that. Um, now, another way to quickly scan through um, preview different colors is if you go down the bottom here and click on this, add, add, sorry, wrong one. Uh, this one here, add adjustment layer. Uh, click on hue saturation. Now, if you hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and move your mouse between these two layers here, Alt, and you see you get that little white box with the arrow. So that's going to create a clipping mask. Click on that. So now this adjustment layer is only going to affect this layer below. Without the clipping mask, this layer here is going to affect all these folders and layers below. Okay. So by doing this, if I double click on this human saturation, I can play around with this hue slider and it will scan through different colors. So you can quickly preview different colors of that gradient. Okay. So I'll delete that. Now, you can play around with the opacity of this layer. So I'll bring this opacity down if it's too strong. Just like that. And another thing you can play around with is take note of the blend mode of this layer. It's set to screen. You can try like soft light, or overlay, overlay is pretty intense, I'll go soft light, and then yeah again, while it's in soft light mode, you can play around with the colors, so you can see it's much more, it's had much more contrast um, to the design, much more intense, uh, but yeah, you can, each photo is gonna be different, so play around with that. Uh, put this back to screen. Okay, so I'll leave that off for the moment. Now these, color option folders, so the way these work is if you just go down and you turn on the eye for that folder, just like that, so this is a color, color, a couple of these color options and you can blend them together, so you can turn on color option 7, turn on 9, and play around with the opacity of these folders, so I could just use say 30% of that effect, um, you know, seventy percent of that effect. Uh, yeah, you just keep playing around. Maybe use a little bit of this one. All right. So now I might look at adding a bit of text to this design. So uh, one of the advantages of having everything still layered is that you can sort of slot the text in between these folders. Um, you know, move them up and down the layer order, and you can, you can blend it in really well with all the other textures. So if I just hit, um, if I hit T on the keyboard to get my text out, and I'll just type um, design, control T, I'll scale that up. Now you can immediately see that because I've placed this text layer below the sketch lines, the sketch lines now sit on top of that text. So you see as I move that around. Um, but also if I move this, text layer below this texture set one, it now sits behind those textures there. So as I move that around, it moves in and out through the textures. Yeah. Now something else, um, a bit more creative that you could do, is if I move this up here, which I'll just move it to the top, you could play around with uh, using the um, the form of some of these textures uh, as a mask for this text text layer. So uh, what I mean by that, if I go inside texture set one, I can use the shape of some of these layers to mask out that te text. So a quick way to do that, if I hold down control or command on a Mac, and if I click on these layers, as I go down, you can see that it's putting those marching ants, whoops, that one, around that texture. So it gives me an idea of where that texture appears. And what I'm gonna look for is a texture that intercepts with my text. So that one there does. So what I can do, yeah, just hold down like, TS1 underscore eight, control click or command click to select it. And then I can select my text layer. And down the bottom here, you can add a mask. So you can see there that now I've used the um, that texture as a mask for that text layer. See it there? So it's added, you know, a pretty cool effect. Sort of fades in, 
um, from the prominent white into um, the background, in and out. Um, and you can unlink this text layer with the mask. So now I can move that text layer around and the mask doesn't move with it. With it. Okay, so just a, um, just a cool little way you can play around with um, blending the text in with the design. Uh, but what I thought probably looked better, I'll just hide that. Did it look better down here? No, it probably looked better up here with the mask. Yeah, all right. I'm just gonna move this down. Okay, so some last minute fine tuning. What I like to do is merge everything that I see here onto one layer, but I wanna keep all the folders. Um, so to do that, if I just select the adjustments folder here, if I hold down Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E on a Mac, what that's done, it's merged everything you see on the canvas onto one layer. So I'll move that around. There I've got the entire design on one layer and I've got all the folders still intact. So now if I go to filter, camera raw filter, I can make some um, quick adjustments to the color, contrast, I can add some sharpening, some vibrance to the colors. Um, so if you look into this panel here, there's some um, handles here you want to just play around with. So you can play around with the temperature, just like that, so you can make it cooler or hotter. Add a, just a fraction, um, make it hotter there. Uh, the tint. Uh, exposure. It's probably good how, how it is. Add a bit of contrast. A little bit. Um, you play around with the highlights. You can make them stronger or you can remove them. Shadows. It looks good how it is. The whites. The blacks. Bring that up a fraction. Um, clarity is like sharpening. So if I just crank this up to 100%, you can see that there. And if you remove it, basically softens it out, adds um, like a glow over your entire design. So I'll put it to zero and I'll just drag it up to the right a little bit. Vibrance will just, um, if I turn that all the way up, you can see that there. Kind of like saturation. So Play around with the saturation. Pretty good how it is. Okay. Pretty happy with that. I'm gonna click OK. So now if I turn this layer on and off, you can see the before and after. Now if you kinda of like like how I am now, if I'm flicking as I'm flicking back and forth, I kinda of like the original and you know I kind of like that as well so what I can do the advantage of having this on one layer and then the folds underneath is that you can blend the two so I don't have to use 100% of this layer the opacity so I bring it back to zero and I just start um, yeah click and hold the opacity and slowly drag to the right to increase the opacity you know I can just use 50% um, of this layer 50% of the effect that we just applied and 50% of all the adjustment layers um, below. Okay, and that's generally the process I go through to, um, you know, quickly do these designs and you know experiment, play around with the layers, and you know, play around with the camera raw filter to adjust the overall, um, yeah, contrast, brightness, and colors, etc. And um, yeah, that's really all there is to it. So um, if you have any issues with the action, um, just send me an email and help you out, but uh, if not, have fun using it. Thanks.